Hey, Aaron Dablo. This is my latest video, Lazy Skinning and Binding. Uh, this one covers how to skin and bind geometry to a skeleton. Uh, it's not something that people like to do a whole lot, and for really complicated characters it can become a very time-consuming or difficult process. So I'm going to cover four things in this video on how to very quickly, easily, and lazily uh, bind your meshes. One, how to use the weight tool. It's a great little tool that lets you set uh, weights on individual verts. Two, how to mirror those weights from one side of a mesh to another if they're symmetrical. Three, how to uh, bind different meshes that don't have symmetry or are completely different uh, topologically to that mesh and copy the weights off of it. And four, how to rigid bind pieces of uh, geometry like buttons or whatever to, uh, to, the, to those meshes and have it ride along. All right, well, let's get started. So here we have our model. It's a farmer model that was lent to me by Kent Trammell. Thank you very much. That's what we will be using for our skinning demonstration here. All right, so first off, a couple things to notice about this guy is that he has a bit of asymmetry to him, and he also has some stuff that's very unusual topology with uh, angled edge loops, and if you see here, we've got uh, lots of layers over itself, and... Uh, yeah, so identifying, you know, a couple of these points of asymmetry would tend to make skinning and mirroring that skinning a little bit difficult. As well as getting layers over top each other to inherit the same uh, weights from the bones. So that you don't have interpenetrating from different weights in between each of your layers. Well, uh, for starters here, I'll show you the quick rig that we built. Nothing special. The only thing that may be a little unique is that I have these extra bones here right in front of the hips, and they're to help keep the pants from collapsing whenever his legs come up like this. As you can see, they aren't pinching quite as much. All right, the first object I'm gonna skin here is the body. Now, if your mesh doesn't have something like this, a full body that you can attach your clothes to later, you can make one that's very simple underneath, just, just a proxied version of your full character. Anything that is a lot easier to skin, you can see here we've got clear edge loops that's gonna make that a lot easier very symmetrical, pretty low res, and no unusual topology. As you see, I've got a skin modifier on here. I'm going to go ahead and add all of our bones. And then going into the edit envelopes, select vertices. So now I can actually select individual vertices, or vertex, and set the weight on that manually. And this right here is one of my favorite tools in Max, it's the weight tool. Not very uh, large button there, but a great asset. All right, starting with the hips, I'm going to select all my vertices and apply them to one. And then from here out, it's going to be a subtractive process. I'm going to start by selecting what's on the leg here, growing that a little bit, and then actually setting its weight. Then I can hit the shrink button, which is very similar to the edit poly option, and then apply a greater value. Shrink, apply, shrink, apply. Touch up a couple weights here and there. And now you can see I was able to do a simple gradient pretty quickly. Now I've sped up the process here because it uh, takes a few minutes, but along the uh, torso and leg I'm doing the same process of making a selection, expanding or shrinking it, and then applying a new weight to each vert for each bone up the spine. And here I'm using the grow and blend functions. These are great for areas that have uh, multiple bones influencing a vert. One of the number one time-saving tips on skinning is being able to copy the weights of your skin from one half of your mesh to the other. If I go down to the mirror mode, you can see that I have blue and green vert. That means it recognizes the opposite positions on the other side of X as similar bones and vertices. I'm going to select all my verts. If I say paste my blue to green verts, it'll copy the weights off of my blue verts onto the green ones. If we exit the mirror mode, select one of these bones, you can see that even though we didn't apply any of these weights, they are selected. All right, well, let's see how this skinning has turned out. All right, we can see a couple of obvious problems right here. So if we select our mesh, go back into the skin, grab a bone, you can see that this one's pulling in a little bit too much. Find the bone that should have that influence, grab the vert that's in the center of our problem, let's maybe grow it, and then blend. You can see our problem areas are softening out a little bit. We can also scale up the weight, grow, and then blend that. 
it's a pretty clear difference what's happening on these two sides. Let's mirror these weights again, and you can see that our problem has been fixed. I'm going to go and unhide the clothing layer, and let's start with his shirt. I'm going to apply the skin wrap modifier, which lets you bind a mesh to another mesh. I found that for this situation, setting it to face deformation works better. There are various settings in here, but for the most part, we just need to make sure we're going to weight all points. Checking this box is going to ensure that every vertex is assigned a weight to the base mesh. Going back up to the top, this is where we select what mesh is going to be bound to. I'm going to click Add, and then select our body mesh that we already skinned. And now you can see it's building data and assigning weights to each of the vertices. Sometimes the normals will misbehave during this part, but it's not important. As you can see, when I move the mesh around, it is bound in the same way as the underlying mesh. But now comes the really cool part. If I select this mesh, and down at the bottom of the skin wrap, there's a Convert to Skin. If I click this button, it'll convert the weights of the skin wrap to an actual skin modifier. Here you go. You can see we have a new skin up here, over a skin wrap that is no longer active. And if I go ahead and move our farmer, his weights are still working. To correct this normals issue, that's kind of freaking out here. I'm going to select this mesh and add a Edit Normals modifier. Put it right underneath the skin and click Unify. Going back up, everything should be working much better now. Let's do the same process with the overalls. As you can see, it ends up with the same problem of normals breaking. So I'm just going to use the Edit Normals modifier using the same process we discussed earlier to fix this problem. Unfortunately, our buttons, we can't work in this way. If we were to simply skin wrap them, they would stretch and shear with the mesh. Let's go ahead and hide these objects, and we've exposed our base mesh again. And we're going to use a tool I made called Rivet Point, which you can download here. Executing the script, you can pick a surface and then create a point. I will select our skin as our surface, and then I'll create a rivet point. By clicking on the surface and setting our correct layer here, by clicking on the surface, it'll create a point helper that's bound to the mesh underneath. This triangle is skin wrapped to the surface, and this point is attached to the surface of that triangle using an attachment constraint. This looks a little bit big, so I'm going to go ahead and delete this, change our size, and make another rivet point. It's a little more reasonable. Now I'll go ahead and parent this buckle to the point helper. Repeating this process across all of the other buttons is easy. If you end up getting some unusual results, you can also try binding it to the overalls geometry itself. And here we are, our finished character. Alright, that's it for now. Uh, thanks for watching. As always, if you have any ideas for future videos or have comments on this one, feel free to leave a message or send an email, and stay tuned for more. Thanks.